Does anybody else out there like Silent Hill, by any chance? Because I do, and I want to make a video about this thing I did. Check this out. Is that cool? I hope so. We can also turn off the fog, set the custom tint on the world, and then disconnect the camera and go fly around. I made a thing, and I wanted to share it. I know this isn't Quake, and this isn't my usual gameplay, but damn it, I want to show off the stuff that interests me, and that's what I'm going to do. So, I made Silent Hill Map Examiner, the unimaginative, unimaginatively named... God, i got to pick better words to say. Um, external tool for the BizHawk emulator. It's a multi-system emulator that includes the PlayStation, and in this case, uh, with Silent Hill. I made a, uh, an external plugin with .NET and C-Sharp. It also supports Lua scripting, if you're into that. In my case, I decided to do this to get an easier GUI development. But this lets you do things like, I have a little overlay camera we can turn on, and then we can read some data, turn off far clipping, and we can see triggers and camera paths in this game. We're right at the game start. This is the starting point. And if we raise up the camera, we can get a sense of the, the, the town. It's just an overlay series of lines and stuff. Not, uh, the game is not actually rendering this. I'm slapping it on top, so I can't make the PlayStation do extra work like that. But I can do this, so I can... We can do things like... Here's a trigger at game start that activates the first cutscene where you run after your daughter. And here's footsteps and goes running off to find her, and blah, blah, blah. But if instead we click this little guy, we go over to the points of interest tab, as I've called it. We have a trigger selected here, that's this guy. And we disable it. Now, no more cutscene. And we can skip right past, head over here, and find poor little Cheryl. And there you go. Game over. Problem solved. Let's get out of here. We can turn... Now this stuff, of course, can be a little unwieldy, so we have a filled rendering mode. We can keep clipping on or off as we as we prefer, whatever we'd like. Keep detaching that. We can mess with the field of view, like we're Quake 2 pro deathmatch players. And run around the world like madmen, quite frankly. But that's a little silly, so let's go back. The default is like 53.13, I think. We check out. Here's another cool thing. A little save state here. The control room by the bridge. We have these stairs, and normally when you go up the stairs, you just kind of go up the stairs, because that's how stairs work. But, well, no, I can, I can leave them up here and show this off. If I click this little guy down here, that one, now I'm going to load the hex editor, which you're not going to be able to see, because my I'm still getting used to OBS scenes and stuff. I've used the software for years, but only for recording uh, simple things not for multi-window stuff like this. So pardon me, but I'm going to poke a memory value here and set this E to a 6, and... Blech. This game handles room-over-room -room movement with triggers that are very carefully controlled. There's only a handful of them, and they're on staircases, and I learned that because of this little tool I wrote. So oh, I missed the stairs, but but that's that's the idea you get. We also have more things we can learn that are even more interesting. Here we have the school. Now you may know Silent Hill has a few leftover um, rooms and things, or some geometry. No real textures, no real activity, but one of them is here in the school when you first start. We turn off far clipping and we can see the world arranged as it is on a nice little grid system. Each room is like I don't know, I haven't seen how many units apart they are, but one of the unfinished rooms is here. And we can, uh, I can show off another feature. Let me move the camera right about, let's say, here. And that is, we look at up here at the coordinates, and we can just set Harry. Let me un uncheck that. Set Harry to negative 27, negative 4, negative 16. Bam. And he pops down right there disconnect the camera, and as we see, there are leftover camera paths in this space. In addition to this geometry that people have seen before, 
Um, I was not aware. There are some leftover camera angles. These things are still active. Oh, the sound stops too. I forgot this is so quiet now. <laughs> Worry about background noise, but we can see. And I I've, I've, have little uh, debug helpers here. We have things like these little diamonds, gems that mark the corners of the camera volume where the camera can, can travel. The purple things are areas where the camera's active. It, the game, I think, picks the closest one that's within a 20-unit radius of Harry, an axis-aligned bounding box on him. So we can do something fun here. If we pick, not this one, if I click and hold, I can cycle through everything under the, under the cursor. I've added that. And we pick this one, which, let me first go out here to deactivate. Now we come back, and when he touches it, we should get this angle here. But if we go over to the camera tab here, we see it's already selected. That's this guy here. And we disable it. Now the camera goes somewhere else. Turn it back on. Oh, well, this one doesn't do anything because there's a larger one that's also active. So we turn that off. <laughs> and now this one takes, uh, takes precedent fun to learn this kind of thing, which is why I built this. I was interested. I had seen maybe early 2021 20, or 22, 2020. At some point I saw people had reverse engineered the level geometry format and animations and models and all sorts of things, but not the levels. I thought I'd be able to contribute something, and uh, so far it seems to have worked. Been able to do a couple of things. We can see, what other, did I make any other save states? Yes, here, here's a good one. Here, we can see this famous camera. So you have, you got all your camera data there. We have this famous angle. And if we get out of here and check it out, this is number 62. That's my favorite camera. <laughs> of course, that's the big middle finger to Resident Evil of uh, no more locked off static cameras. And again, we can disable that. And it moves to the nearest one, which is a little further up. Oh, I went the wrong way. Okay. <laughs> and that's one of the things I've been... I have been putting this video off because I'm building it up too much in my head to make it really nice and, and show off a bunch of stuff. And I have to stop worrying about being so polished and just get the job done. We can see some interesting things about cameras in this game. Let's get through this with the fast forward. It's getting darker, getting darker, darker, darker. That's the word, darker. <laughs> get really, God, I get so nervous and start stuttering. So we see the camera rises up like that. And then as you go down, it follows it. You can see that orange. It's just a plane. And that's because that's exactly what it is, this plane here. At volume, I forgot this was going to be so loud. I'm going to balance this audio in post, but... <laughs> Camera paths in this game are defined by... Uh, there's a min and a max. It's just two points. So if the points are lined up on a world axis, it forms a rail. If they're offset on one, like this, it's a plane. And then if you offset them on both, you get a box like this. A volume that the camera can travel through. It's quite brilliantly simple. It takes up very little space. I was impressed. Kind of, oh god, and <laughs> the camera sort of lurps its way back. Blech. And as we go through this part, we can see all the triggers and all the all the camera stuff. There's all sorts of things I haven't uncovered yet, no doubt. I haven't found cutscene camera locations or paths or any of that stuff. I haven't found enemy spawners. There's pl tons of stuff I'm looking forward to getting into. <laughs> see all that stuff in the background, really. Really gives you a sense of how the levels are laid out. Or the, the stages is what I believe they're called. Oh, that's the next thing. Okay, sorry, we're going to have to cut that short. The next thing I wanted to show... Turn that back on. The other tabs here. Um, we have things like the fog that we can turn off. And we can tint the world. And we can color it whatever we want. Let's say teal. And we can maybe turn the fog back on and make that custom. So let's make that yellow. And there we go. <laughs> a little overwhelming, but cool. We have all the strings for the level. There are control codes like uh, pausing and changing color and all sorts of stuff. New lines. 
really interesting. The Save tab, it turns out you can open the Save menu whenever you want by uh, activating a certain thing, and saves that you save not at a save point are marked with the word anywhere. They apparently, I guess, a debugging thing? This is not directly a debugging thing, I just made this myself. But uh, this text is not me. The game has provisions for saving in a place that's not an actual save point. Strange. And not really, but you know. <laughs> um, this business I would recommend staying away from. It is, uh, it'll screw up your save states and save RAM if you're not careful which is part of BizHawk, so if you really don't know what this is, don't touch it, please. Uh, stay behind the yellow line. <laughs> I, won't even, I won't even discuss it, just to encourage. We have some uh, test things, just in case, so if I wanted to plop a test box where Harry starts, we can do that. That's mostly for me debugging my camera code and 3D rendering. It's not terribly interesting. We can do this. Let's see if this crashes. I don't... I, I'm pretty sure this works. We read part of his mesh and then plop it there. I put these little boxes at each vertex of the model that I load. And uh, you can kind of see that's Harry's head. <laughs> yeah, I kind of get a vague, it's not really, again, this was just for testing purposes. So it's just a little odd thing I added. And we get to the real fun stuff. Thank you to, what was their name? Horror X from the consolegames.ru forums way back when. Uh, their understanding of the file system allowed me to decode this, and now you can look at all the file names, and then you can maybe select some and extract them if you want to, or extract entire directories. There's already tools to do this, of course, but I thought it would be nice to just have this in here. It was very convenient, easy to do. Oh, here's the map files. This is why I call them stages, because it's multiple things have the same map number, but different stage. S00, zero zero, and uh, 1 and 2. Just curiosity. I'm just sort of going off the top of my head here, spitballing everything I can think of to share, because I am not good at writing scripts and planning things out, so sorry. We can grab the frame buffer, and we can see things. Down here is the front buffer that's been finished and is displayed, and then the back buffer that's being drawn to, so you can just sort of grab that. Um, you can change the numbers, if you want to, and grab the entire thing and see all of the memory. You can save it as a ping or a bitmap or JPEG or whatever. And then I've got some utility functions here if you want to convert floating point numbers to uh, fixed point hex values to search for things and PlayStation angle rotation too if you want uh, 315 degrees is that. That is Pretty much everything. Did I do everything? Yes. The map. This this isn't terribly useful. This is to grab the, uh, you know, the area map, like the the town maps and stuff from memory. But it's kind of useless. And I, I've got some basic stats here uh, to decode a little bit of that. I haven't put much effort into this yet. But basically, these guys, you can go to the various points. The points of interest, which are these things. Points of interest is what I. It's the best name I could come up with, because it's more than just a point in three D space. You have, uh, it's a point that then is targeted by one or more triggers. You can have triggers that are multiple triggers on the same point, and it does things. It's very strange. Haven't decoded all that yet. As you see here, I have, you know, thing zero and thing three and all that. I have a few things worked out. Doors and where they go. Text triggers. But, um, yeah. It's a work in progress. These little things are clickable, they'll open the hex editor, but of course, again, as I, as I say, I don't have that sorted out yet on my, uh, my OBS scene setup. My apologies. And then just sort of, you can get Harry's position, you can put him wherever you want. For some reason, the vertical axis, which I think is the Y axis, because it's one of those programs. I prefer Z up, but this game seems to be Y up. But uh, the positive axis increases down. The, the vertical axis is positive downward, so if you want to put him up in the air, you could say negative 20 and boop and watch him drop out of the sky. <laughs> you could set his angles to point him in which direction. Change the field of view. Invert your controls, which is the way I prefer it, quite frankly. So I, I recognize most people don't, so that's not the default, but it's there. And then some little leftover, this control thing, like you can, you can read, uh, 
there's a place in memory that tells you what buttons are being pressed. I just kind of, it's not terribly useful. I just added that because I could, which is a great philosophy. <laughs> great philosophy for development. We can turn on back face culling even for wireframe if we want to improve performance or if you like the way it looks. We can set, you can even set the opacity arrow keys, the little arrows, or I, just like any WinForms app, you could just scroll wheel over these things, which I thought was cool. I didn't realize you could do that until I tried it. For some reason, this box doesn't let you actually type a number in. I don't know what I'm doing wrong there. I'll have to look at that. But this, make your crosshair bigger. So um, let me see my list here. Is there anything else I wanted to share? Yeah, the hidden rooms got that, the FOV slider, custom fog, no fog, camera controls. Oh yeah, the boiler article. Did I did I put that on a thing here? I could have sworn. Oh, that's a wrong that's the wrong save state. I have a thing. Let me let me try it. Let's go take a look right here. I have a set of these. Nowhere of boiler room. And then wrong thing. There we go. This is in the North American version. And I think, I think they said the Japanese 1.0, this trigger doesn't do anything. And that's because, for some reason, it's disabled by default. So if we re-enable it, we can activate the thing. And it just it says the same thing it's supposed to. I am not breaking new ground by pointing out that this is still here and works. I just thought it would be nice to show how convenient it is to access. You can see the yaw of this particular point, that it doesn't work if you're facing the wrong way. Interesting stuff. Interesting if you're, you know, like me. So, anyway, you can check this out. Let me try and... Let me try and sort this out here. Let's get back to there just as a good place to finish off uh, on GitHub. Now, let me... Let me mess with this here. Where is... Where the hell is... Full screen, there we go, okay. If I switch over to this, can we? We can, yes, beautiful, GitHub. It ends with tens, that's my name on uh, GitHub as well as Twitter if you wanna catch me there. Silent Hill Map Examiner, nothing special. Documentation is lacking, as we see. It is a perpetual to-do item, but most of it's self-explanatory, or if you have any questions, let me know in the comments, and uh, I'll leave a link there too, or the description, sorry. Um, so yeah, if this is something that interests you, please take a look and have fun. <laughs> How long have we been going? 18 minutes. Oh my God, I got to get out of here. All right, thanks for tolerating this. I'm putting this up along with some other traditional Quake videos so that people aren't too irritated by my indulgences. So thank you for watching. Have a good day.